today on Direction for Life. Good life is doing things God's way, period. Is God's way always the easiest way? No. Is God's way the funnest way? No. But God's way is the way that's going to cause you to have long life. Long life. Because he said, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. Today's message is Living the Good Life by Dr. Herbert Bailey. Let's go to um, uh, where we want to start today. Ephesians. Ephesians second chapter and verse 10. Now, I'm going to introduce this today. I'm going to give you headlines and highlights. I'm not even getting to the points yet. I just want to establish this fact that I'll tell you about in a moment. Ephesians 2 and 10, the traditional King James says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. That verse gets a little more detailed and a little plainer through the Amplified Version. The Amplified, Amplified Version of Ephesians 2.10 says this, We are God's own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do those good works which God predestined, which means planned beforehand, for us. Here's the part I want you to really see. Taking paths which he prepared ahead of time, that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. So according to this, there, is a, there are paths that God prearranged, planned before him, that we should walk in them, that we sh can live the good life, which he prearranged and made ready for us. So there is a good life that God's already prearranged and made ready for you. You just got to get on the path. Now, here people, people talk about making your path in life, following your path in life. You know, now, I, I could try to find a path between here and Charlotte, or I can just go down 20 and get on 77 because there's already a path that's been made for me. Are you following me? But, but if I don't like going, I said, no, I, I just seem like it's more diagonal. I ought to be able, well, I'm going to have to cut down a whole bunch of trees, Okay. I'm going to risk, some, risk going through some tigers, lions, and bears, oh my, okay? It's going to take me a whole lot longer if I try to make my own path it, than me getting on the path that's already been prearranged. See, a lot, a lot of you taking back roads in life, and God said a highway shall be there. And you're on these back roads, you try and make your own path and, and all this. And all you got to do is get in this word and you'll find that there is a prearranged path for you through God's word that will cause you to live the good life, which is the subject of this teaching I want to start today. It's called living the good life. God wants each of us to live the good life. But according to the scriptures, and particularly Ephesians 2 from the Amplified, if, if I'm going to live the good life, i got to take the path that he prepared ahead of time. So watch this. There's a path for your life that's been prepared before you got here. That once you get born again, now you get on that path. That we should walk in them, walk in those paths, and we walk in those paths. We'll live the good life. If there's a good life that's been prearranged and made ready for you to live. Stop trying to find your own path and get on the path that God's outlined for, for us through his word. The Bible said there is a way, let me use another word, there's a path that seemed right unto man, but the end there are the ways of death. People tell you, well, you know, you, 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 know, you believe what you believe, I believe what I believe, you know, uh, but we're all going to the same place. That ain't the word. There's a path to heaven, there's a path to hell. There's a path to everlasting life, and there's a path to destruction. There's a path to increase. There's a path to decrease. Are y'all listening to me? And so th this whole thing about finding your own way, now let me add this because this came out in first service, that even today, parents, you need to understand, parents, our responsibility as parents is to put our children on the path that God has for them. Now, now that, that may sound very, uh, um, uh, uh, what's the word I want to use? But that may sound very common. That may sound, you know, uh, that, you know that, that's a no-brainer. But you need to understand, society today 
is basically almost teaching, is us teaching that no children are supposed to find their own path. They're taking away the responsibility of parents. Part of being able to even discipline your children was to help them know what was right and wrong. Amen. Okay? The Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. That's what, but, but, so you, you let your children find their own path, they're going to be fools. I'm, now, I'm in the book. Because foolishness is bound. They're bound to be foolish. It's up to you to help them not be foolish. Especially regarding this whole new arena that y'all got quiet during our cartoon day set the other night of this gender identity thing. They're trying to, you know, I'll tell y'all getting quiet on me too. <laughs> that, that people are supposed to just find their own gender. Find their own gender identity. So if your three-year-old says, Mommy, your three-year-old boy says, Mommy, I want to wear a dress to school. No, no, we're laughing at this, but you know what I'm saying? This, this is how they're saying what you need to be able to do today. Then your child is trying to in, express himself or herself and let them find their own identity. Since when the children know what they're doing? They say you will crush their spirit if you try to force them to be something they don't want to be. I'm just going to tell you all right now. I got three boys who are men, who are men, men, barely, barely. I mean, well, well, I mean my, my boys, it wasn't never, I don't mean no harm, just wasn't nothing ever soft about it. I sometimes wish that I, I would have got my security deposits back if, if they were a little softer. <laughs> These were some hard boys, I mean, tear up stuff. Let me show you I can pull this doorknob off, Dad. Let me show you I can, we can pull these doors off the hinges. Watch. Anybody else got boys like that? Every other place we had lived, they, they required a month security deposit, two months security deposit. I came here to Oklahoma, they told me to give us $250. I said, no, you don't know my kids. You, you, you won't need more money than that from me. Because I'm going to owe you some money. By the time my boys give it, give it 10, you're going to wish you got three months from me. But, but, I mean, huh? but I'm telling you, if, if, if my boy, if, if, if God, if my boys was walking around to him, like this here, daddy, I'm, no, 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 stop it. We don't walk like that. That's not how men walk. Now, you can tell me I'm crushing their spirit. Yes, I will crush. I will crush that spirit. Yes, I will. I'm going to crush it. Because it's a wrong spirit. There are spirits that need to be crushed. And parents, I don't, I don't care what these psychologists are telling you, it's your responsibility to crush wrong spirits that try to get on your children. That's parenting. That's parenting. The Bible says children are born and go forth telling lies. You all know what the Bible says that? They go forth telling lies. You don't have to teach your children to lie. It come out of their spirit. It's a, the lying spirit got to be crushed. Do you take that cookie? No, no. You know, I, I got, I, um, um, what was it? I got, I got something somebody sent. It's a, um, it, it, it's a, it's a dog in the house. And, and the caption said the dog could meet him at the door. It says, it says, I'm so glad you home. Somebody messed on the floor. The dog is saying that. I'm so glad you're home. Somebody messed on the floor. You know the dog lying. <laughs> so parenting is training, I'm in the book, train up the child in the way he should. Oh, not want to go. I know you want to go this way, but that's not God's will for you to go that way. Okay, I'm going to go deeper. Well, that's natural to me. Well, getting up in the middle of the night, eating two whole cakes at 3 o'clock in the morning, you may do that naturally. It's, it, no problem. Some say, I can do it. Don't even be full. 
That may be your natural appetite. That don't mean it's good for you. It will kill you. It will lead you to an early grave. It will give you diabetes and all that by you doing what's natural to you. How many of you know appetite's got to be curbed? Oh, come on now. You, you got to discipline your appetite. Just like you have to discipline your, your palate, your, what, your, what you taste, that your, your natural appetite, you have to also discipline the appetites of your flesh. Your appetite feel like you need three women. I need a wife, a side chick, and a backup chick. Somebody said, I ain't heard the backup one. See, sir, I should, <laughs> shouldn't have heard that one. Somebody said, shouldn't have wrote that I'm going to write that one down, side. Side and the back. If the side one don't work out, got a backup. Now, you may do that naturally. You may not have any conviction about it. That's not the life of the, of the believer. Or you're following me. So just because something's natural to you don't mean it pleases God. And as people of God, our job, our agenda in life, I want to please God. When David repented, he said, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, not what I want to do. So parents, I'm going to stick, stick here for a moment. So parents are responsible for training up a child in the way they should go. Every time you see me dedicate a child, I remind that, that the Bible says in Deuteronomy 6, I believe, thou shalt teach them diligently, teach your children. Diligently. Teach them uh, when you lie down, when you rise up, when you walk, when you talk, when you're doing things, do it intentionally, do it unintentionally. Stop the TV show, put it on pause, explain what's going on, explain what's right, explain what's wrong, explain what, come on now. Explain why, why they do that and why we don't do that. And Christians, y'all realize of all the religions, mainstream, born-again Christian, meantime, we are the most jelly back people when it comes to enforcing what we believe. The Muslims will cover that little child up and, and, and all you see is their eye. They don't care what that child say. You know, you know God, God, God bless me, you know, God, I shop at designer stores when I travel. Okay, no, no, no big folks who shop in the designer store. The Muslim, they all covered. I'm, I'm like, what you want Burberry jeans for? Nobody see them. <laughs> no, really, but, but best much can tell you. They be in there all covered up, but they get the latest design this, and ain't nobody gonna see. It just makes them feel good. And they will say, this is what we do. This is how we live. And they will teach their children that. Jehovah Witness will brain, uh, will indoctrinate their children and say, we don't celebrate Christmas. We don't celebrate birthdays. They don't care that everybody else in school having cupcakes. <laughs> they don't care. This is what we do. And yet we won't even tell our children that as a Christian, because you're raised as a Christian, we expect you to not have sex until you get married. We won't even tell them. And then when they get pregnant, we're like, what happened? How did this happen? Now, you know better. How they know better? How they know better? They don't know better unless you tell them better. They don't know better cause, cause, because I'm here. Most of the time, they, they talk to their friends while I'm preaching. They know better because you tell them better. Don't matter what I say, it's what you say. And now you're in a culture war with what, come on now, what Jay-Z say and Beyonce say and Lil John say and uh, 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 um, um, what's one with the big butt? Um, um. <laughs> who, who am I talking about? Nicki Minaj. Minaj. Y'all know who got the big butt. <laughs> How do y'all know? So, right as soon as they say, all y'all knew. <laughs> So they either going to hear what they say or they're going to hear what you say. And you got to say what you say more than what they saying. So the Bible tells us in, in Ephesians, what, 6 chapter, believe, fathers, don't provoke your children, but bring them up in the nurture and the admonition of the Lord. Get them on the path. 
Don't let them figure out the path. Well, that's, that's my, well my, my child just tend to be a little more effeminate. Stop it. Oh, I know I, this is not part to stop it. Well, my, my girl, you know, she's just a little rougher. Stop it. You cannot control what they do out of, out of your house, but long as they're living in here. Uh, see, I know this is unpopular because now every, everybody is just supposed, we just supposed to be left to ourselves to express ourselves so we become more and more carnal, more and more sinful when God has a prearranged path for us. And if we're going to live the good life, the good life is on the path that God wants you to live on. Doing what he wants you to do, living how he wants you to live. We are his workmanship. We are his handiwork. He got a plan for us. He has a path for us. We're going to live the good life, we got to take prearranged paths. Stop trying to figure out your own path. And letting all the psychologists and, and, and who the, or whoever the modern day gurus are. Now they're telling you, you know, I mean, e e even homosexuality, right? It used to be, it used to be male, female, homosexual. Homosexual was men with men uh, or women with women. That wasn't that hard to pick out. It was four. Four. Three. Now they tell you, well, between male and female, there's a whole spectrum of identities. Huh? Oh, 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 why are you looking at me crazy? This is what they're teaching now. Between male and female, there's a whole spectrum of sexual identities. You thought we were confused before. <laughs> whole spectrum. You know, it's like, it's, 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 it's like when you, you know, when you buy the, the first little basic set of crayons, Crayola, you know, you had red, brown, you know. Yeah. Then they come up with caramel. What well, was caramel? A little mixture there. And, 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 you know, I just want brown. Some, some, some of y'all don't know this. Our colors in our church, some of y'all, Elder Perry, Sister Perry, y'all remember. Our original colors were supposed to be green and magenta. You remember the magenta? When the last time y'all seen magenta around here? We just merged into burgundy. <laughs> we were never supposed to have burgundy. It was supposed to be green and magenta. But nobody knows what magenta is. Some of y'all say magenta, that's the same as burgundy. Some say magenta, that's, that's purple. Some say magenta, that's plum. Y'all ever see the choir? See, they, they need a color chart sometimes. Y'all ever see the choir? <laughs> They tell them we're going to wear peach and brown. I ain't never seen on so many peaches in my life. <laughs> Y'all ever notice? What's the colors of the peach and brown? Orange, coral. <laughs> Y'all ever notice? Because it's hard. If you don't make it plain, it's hard. And that's what's happened with sexual identity. People told me there's a whole spectrum. You're supposed to love a man, love a woman, love a half man, half woman, three, four women. Well, one part of me, man, another part of me. Ah, oh, please! God ain't that confused! And if you let your children buy into that, that's what you're going to have. You're going to have confused people. And now they're going in and out. Y'all know going in and out is dangerous. I don't want to go deep in there. That going in and, in and out of what? What you been in and out of? Oh, well, let, let me move on. Let, let me move on. Let me move on. Well, if you came out of that, you ain't coming in this. Some of y'all think this is too much. That's why we have children's church. We have kids' town. You should have sent them. That's dangerous. That's dangerous. 
Now, I believe in rare situations, in rare situations, something could have went wrong. That's why we can be born again. Okay? We're not supposed to be born with six fingers, but in rare cases, something can go wrong. Something can go wrong. But that ain't, that ain't most, most people, it's not a chromosome imbalance and all that. No, it's perversion. Let's call it what it is. It's perversion. Somebody came to me one time and said, Pastor, I just want to, they wanted to meet with me and Pastor Marsha. Just want to meet with me and Pastor Marsha. And, 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 uh, and so I said, what? Well, it won't, won't be long, Pastor. I said, well, it won't be long. I said, what you need to meet with us about? So I just want to tell you, you know, me and my wife, we was, you know, we were going through something. I knew they were going through, we were counseling through their problems. And I, and I said, oh, okay, I know you're, you're going through. And I, so I said, oh, Lord, he even got somebody else pregnant while he was wife. I think he done messed up. He said, I just want to let you know. I was just curious what it was to be like with a man. So I had sex with a man one time. What you tell me for? <laughs> Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. I ain't no priest. What you tell, tell Jesus. <laughs> glory, glory, since I, I feel better, since I laid my burden down. Now you put your burden over on me. <laughs> Curiosity killed that cat. <laughs> For all you curious folk, that's how that cat died. Y'all heard about him? God has already prepared the good life for you. All you have to do is walk the path that he has set out for you. Dr. Herbert Bailey explains what it means to live the good life in this timely series. Order today for your love gift of $20 or more. Just call 1-877-798-LIFE or go online to rightdirection.info. Ask for Living the Good Life. He was arrested after being betrayed. They charged him with blasphemy and sentenced him to die. Some of his disciples turned their back on him. He was led away like a sheep to the slaughter. They stripped and they beat him. A crown of thorns placed on his head and they drove nails deep in his hands and feet. He was hung from a cross to die a death he didn't deserve. Yet, through it all, his mission to bear the sin of mankind was accomplished with three simple words. It is finished. Join Right Direction Church International for a special Good Friday service on Friday, March 25th at 12 noon at 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia. We'll have special guest, Bishop Liston Page. Come experience the good in Good Friday with Right Direction. You can knock me down, but don't, I will not stay down. I got resurrecting power. Watch this. And even if you see me crying right now, I ain't gonna cry always. I will be back. You cannot keep a resurrected man or woman down. We keep rising back up. Rise up with Right Direction Church International on Sunday, March 27th. Invite a friend to join you at any of our three locations in Columbia. Join us at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. at 3506 Broad River Road. In Orangeburg, meet us at 990 Willington Drive at 10.30 a.m. In Florence, join us at 1507 West King Avenue. We'll have giveaways, dynamic praise and worship, and an inspiring message. It's time for you to rise up. is so important. When you know you are bold and confident. You don't give up hope. 
And I can honestly say that it's that one thing, one, one thing that will keep you going and that will empower you to be that free, unique young lady and young man that God has called out of the dark and into his marvelous life. Big Jesus Weekend at the Me and God Youth Conference, March 25th through the 27th, Right Direction Church International, 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia. For more info, visit mybigweekend.org or call 1-877-798-1577. Join Dr. Marsha Bailey when she speaks in your area. Make plans to be with her at Vision of Faith Christian Ministry for their Women's Conference, Friday, March 11th at 7 p.m. The church is located at 205 Alice Street in Spartanburg. Next week on Direction for Life. Brothers, women ain't the good life. Drugs ain't the good life. You know ain't the good life. That's an illusion of the good life. The good life is being on the path that God prearranged for you to walk in. Anybody made up your mind, you're gonna live the good life. If you are in our area, come join us at one of our three locations. In Columbia, South Carolina, Sunday morning worship is at 7.30 a.m. and 10.30 a.m. Wednesday Bible study is at 12 noon and 7 p.m. Friday, women's Bible study is at 12 noon. Our worship center is located at 3506 Broad River Road in Columbia. In Orangeburg, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Trey and Katie Brave for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 990 Willington Drive in Orangeburg. In Florence, South Carolina, join us with campus pastors Dwayne and Denise White for Sunday morning worship at 10.30 a.m. and Tuesday evening Bible study at 7 p.m. We're located at 1507 King Avenue in Florence. Please email your testimonies to praisereport at rightdirection.info or letters can be mailed to P.O. Box 21672, Columbia, South Carolina 29221. Please consider partnering with us or send a one-time financial gift. For more information, visit our website at rightdirection.info or call us toll free at 877-798-5433. Right Direction Ministries, empowering people and changing generations.